I don't know if I count as famous, but I'm at least infamous for annoying governments by introducing people to the idea that there cannot be such thing as a legitimate ruling class at all. Most people are so stuck in the paradigm of who should we elect to office? What form should our government take? What should it do? And what should it control? What should it fund? The whole discussion rests on the paradigm that there is such thing as a legitimate government. And then they bicker over the details. There isn't such thing as a legitimate ruling class. It shouldn't be doing anything. It shouldn't even be there. And that's a huge shock to most people's way of thinking to even begin imagining a world in which there isn't a ruling class. There isn't a government. And people usually react by thinking, oh, it's going to be mayhem and death and destruction and we'll all be like wild animals, which isn't the case. It's like if an animal's been raised its whole life in a cage and you open the cage door, it looks out and says, I don't know what's out there. I'm scared to death of what's out there because I have no idea what it would be like. Humanity wasn't meant to be a domesticated species owned by a ruling class. It was actually supposed to be the top where every human being owns himself, is in charge of his own life. The idea that we need to be managed like cattle by a ruling class, even a tiny ruling class, because over here in the U.S., the whole supposed point of the Constitution was to make the ruling class really nice and really small and really weak and mm-hmm. do hardly anything, which, of course, didn't turn out that way, it turned into this giant war machine with a huge extortion racket and everything else. But even the theory, like a lot of Americans say, we have to get back to the Constitution. And I say, well, why do you think it would be any better the second time around? There's a reason that was doomed to lead to this, because it didn't quite quite do away with the idea that a ruling class can be legitimate, that somebody can actually have authority over you, meaning you have to throw away your own ability to judge right from wrong and just obey what they say. That's basically the essence of the belief in authority in government, that you have an obligation to bow to somebody else's ideas and opinions over your own. There are lots of good people out there who are condoning what amounts to widespread evil, because it isn't just the person who votes who gets lied to and then duped and then whoops, I, you know, I'm paying the price for being a bonehead. The person who votes puts into power people who rob millions and millions of his neighbors and then go wage war on the other side of the world and are killing people. It's people's good intentions plus their belief in government that leads to these horrendous results. We have a world of people where most of them believe in a superstition called authority that twists their goodness and their virtue and their compassion that takes good people and converts their energy and their production into power for the nastiest people in the world who go around murdering and robbing people by the millions. And if people would just overcome that superstition and recognize it for what it is, the vast majority of injustice would be gone overnight because the vast majority of injustice, it's done by people who think, well, this is authority. I have to enforce the law. And the other people saying, well, we have to obey the law and we have to just vote for who we want and make them take everybody else's money. They play the game that gets them enslaved and gets everybody else enslaved just because they don't understand the game is a gigantic lie. It's just an illusion and people need to give that up. As far as the myth itself among everybody, all of recorded history shows examples of people who come along and say, I have the right to rule you and lots of other people believe them. They used to call themselves churches. Now they almost always call themselves government. It's the same thing. It's a group that does that. Part of that can be misunderstanding passed on. But what we have today is very intentionally engineered and planned. The current form of authoritarian indoctrination traces back directly to the Prussian indoctrination system, which they openly said, we're trying to come up with a way to train people to not have any will other than what the ruling class wants them to have. In other words, to not have free will, to not have any choice of their own, to just be easily controlled and manipulated tools for the masters, the ruling class. And they openly admitted that was the goal of the Prussian indoctrination system. And that's what modern schooling is modeled after directly. They said, well, what do we have to put kids through so that when we tell them go over there and kill somebody, they do it. Literally, that was one of the main goals of the system upon which the U.S. education system is based. And it still does it. And it still works. The whole approval, disapproval thing that the one thing you learn in school is if you do as you're told, you get approval and reward. And if you don't do as you're told, you get disdain and condemnation, they might not hit you, but they'll make sure everybody knows you're a bad person because you didn't do as you were told. Because the rulers actually realize we need them to be really stupid at this point, because if they can 
minds start to think for themselves, the game is up. I think that the myth of authority and government is completely doomed. The number of people who understand that they own themselves just exponentially exploding just in the last few years. I know thousands of people who have given up the belief in government. Ten years ago, I knew maybe three. So it's definitely speeding up. Humanity as a whole seems to get to a point where it's suddenly ready for a new idea and then the individuals in it suddenly seem able to think about it when before they weren't. Because every once in a while when I watch the news and I watch a political campaign, it stuns me that anybody believes a word that comes out of their mouth. I, yeah. I don't know if I'm just more in tune with the way they spin things or if it's actually gotten that much stupider. But it really seems to me like their propaganda is just so pathetic. It may be a symptom of they realize, well, the smart people, we're not going to get them anymore. So we have to keep as many people completely incapable of thought. At the same time, there are a lot of people waking up. So it may be that the control freaks are just giving up on a large portion of society and just trying to keep enough other people so incapable of thought that they can still be controlled and enslaved. But even that's going to be temporary. Because when enough people understand it, even those who don't are going to benefit from the ones who do, basically ending the injustice that's done in the name of law. To be the most successful tyranny, a king can't do that because a king is just saying, well, I get to rule you just because. If you want to do a, a higher level of control and monitoring and violence everywhere, democracy and a republic is way better because you go around stomping people and stealing their money and saying, well, we're doing this on behalf of the people. Because if you say I'm doing this on behalf of the king, eventually somebody gets fed up and knocks the king's head off. But if you can tell the people we're stomping on you and robbing you and controlling all your choices for the common good and for you and you voted for it and we're representing you, <laughs> all the propaganda that comes along with it makes it so they can get away with a lot more than any king ever could. I mean, what King George III did to the colonists was nothing compared to what every single Congress and president does to the people here. It's not even close. If you look at what they had a revolution over, it was ridiculous. There was no income tax. There was these little few percent taxes on tea and pieces of paper. Whoopie do. They had a revolution <laughs> over that. And uh. yet every July 4th, Americans are out there waving their flags. Yay, we're independent of this tiny little trivial tyrant that we used to have. And now we have this giant monstrosity that people imagine to be working for us and representing us and all the other rhetoric that goes into making it look legitimate when it isn't. And so they put up with a lot worse than I think they would if some king just came along and said, I'm just going to rule you because I can. Starting at the bottom level, the cops are part of the ruling class because they get to boss people around and hurt people. And the politicians, to me, are just sort of a step up from them. They're still somebody else's puppet. They're still playing a game somebody else built, but they get their own little bunch of power out of it. So they're part of it, but I don't at all think that they're the top. Some people say, oh, you think it's a conspiracy? Of course it's a conspiracy. You go to a supermarket to buy a drink. How much planning and thought people put into even trivial things of, well, we want to sell a candy bar. Well, what do you put on the commercial and what do you make it look like and how do you, if they work that hard just to sell a candy bar, <laughs> How hard do you think someone's going to work to enslave the world? And they spent zillions of dollars figuring out what they should put on the label to have people buy it. But that's planning and conspiring. To think that for some reason people wouldn't do that when it comes to politics is just insane. Of course, they spent tons of money and tons of thought on how do we control people? How do we get as much power over them as we possibly can without them resisting or running away or shooting at us or something? I think one of the biggest challenges is most good people can't really understand how sociopaths function. So they have a hard time believing that there are some people who really don't care if they kill thousands of people on their way to getting power. And if you can't imagine that there are such people, then you say, well, no, they can't. It must have been by accident or a misunderstanding or something that couldn't have been on purpose because nobody would be that evil because normal people cannot relate to sociopaths. And I think most of the people in office, especially high up, and the people beyond them, the puppet masters or whatever you want to call them, are totally sociopaths. They don't have empathy or sympathy with actual human beings. And they don't mind starting wars and killing millions of people if they think it'll help their investment over here and give them a little more leverage over there. The average good person doesn't even want to aim his thought process in the direction that might tell him, 
wow, there are some people in the world with that much power who don't care if millions of human beings die. To them, it's like stepping on an anthill. And we better understand that and realize that there is nothing they won't do to empower themselves. And if we aren't willing to see them for what they are, we won't know how to deal with them. We won't know how to, to resist and stop it from happening. These are inhuman people. They really don't care. The only reason they wouldn't kill us all is because then they'd have nobody to enslave. Any position in which you're going to have power over other human beings, like the power to boss them around and hurt them if they disobey, is going to attract nastier people. And however nasty you are going in, it's going to make it worse. For the people at the top, I think that's probably just genuine sociopaths. I think they're people who really are incapable of of empathy. And there's even been psychologists writing papers about how politicians totally fit the mold of sociopaths who really have no remorse and they have no empathy for other human beings. To them, the whole life, the whole world is about how do they get what they want. And they can pretend to have empathy if it gets them what they want. And they can pretend to care about people if it gets what they want. And they can sound sincere if it gets them what they want. They make much better liars because they feel no guilt about lying. Most of us, if we have to lie, it looks like we're lying because we feel bad about it because we don't want to lie to other people. Sociopaths don't have that problem. They don't care. They don't feel guilt. And I think the people at the very top are probably mostly or entirely those people. But in between, a lot of people go there because they want to be on a power trip and the people who aren't get made into that. I think the most succinct, accurate definition I've seen, which used to be in a bunch of dictionaries, is government is the exercise of authority over a people or place. And so so to me, the crux is really authority, and that is the right to rule. It's not just the ability to control other people, because most people have that in one way or another. It's the right. It's the idea that certain people, it's legitimate for them to forcibly control others, not just because of the situation, not like saying I have the right to get the little old lady's purse back from the mugger, but because I am something special and you are my subject, so I have the right to rule you. And that ties in with about the cop, because the best way to bypass somebody's conscience is to convince them that they're not acting on behalf of themselves. And mm -hmm. cops will say, hey, I don't make the law. I just enforce it as if I'm not responsible for my actions. I'm just a tool of some weird thing somewhere else called government. And it really does imply you can't blame me for what I am personally doing because I'm not really doing it. <laughs> Something else <laughs> is making me do it. Again, the belief in authority leads everybody, good people, bad people, everything in between to advocate and do bad things they wouldn't otherwise do. Just if that was removed, that excuse of authority in government and law and all the other terminology that goes along with it, if that was removed, most cops, however secretly sadistic they might be, wouldn't dare to do this stuff, whether it's from public condemnation or just from being scared of what somebody else might do to them. The only reason most of them do what they do is because they believe in authority and they really believe that legislation gives them an exemption from morality. They really and truly believe that. So that when they do something and someone says, hey, what you're doing is bad. Oh, I don't make the law. I just enforce it. I'm just following orders. Belief in government is a purely faith-based, indoctrinated belief. It doesn't actually make any sense in practical terms or in evidence or in logic to the point where, yeah, it's some people, they weren't even, they weren't gods or anything. Some people wrote down a thing on paper and then they called it legislation and they called it law. They did certain rituals to pretend to magically make it something special. Mm -hmm. And then people go around saying, well, this is law. That shows me how important it is for people to get rid of this insane belief in authority because literally it makes two thirds of Americans into murderers waiting to happen. If authority comes along and says, hey, murder that guy, two thirds of Americans probably will just because they believe in authority. Even if people know they don't have any legal obligation to do so, people have such a hard time disobeying a perceived authority. Oh, well, I guess I have to put up with it. It's just a little version of the Milgram experiment. Most people literally feel physical discomfort and fear at the thought of disobeying anyone in authority. I don't just mean the fear of he might beat me up. Even when you know he isn't going to do anything, most people can't say, no, I'm not going to do that. Even if they manage to say no, they'll be nervous and terrified and feel uncomfortable 
because it goes against their years and years of programming and indoctrination that trains them to think if you do as you're told, you're good. If you don't, you're bad. That's the message of school. And that message gets pounded in people's heads. It is the primary problem of human society and has been for thousands of years. The reason they're able to do that is because all of their victims hallucinate a thing called authority and they couldn't get away with it if their victims didn't imagine it to be legitimate. It's a very enlightening glimpse into what government really is beneath the rhetoric and the propaganda we're taught and the fact that they don't care about their laws and they don't care about justice and they don't care about anything. They put on a facade of due process and all these flowery, nice sounding things, but underneath it's just brute force and they will lie, cheat and steal all they have to to keep their human livestock enslaved.